Now let's talk about a few things to help you get started with Ivan Trevino's Float Like a Butterfly. Now at the beginning of this piece and at the end, you'll be using quite a bit of the single alternating strokes. We want to make sure that we're doing those correctly and we're using the proper motion. What we want to avoid is by simply rotating the forearm to create a rocking back and forth motion. Instead, we want to use it as a natural extension of the single independent stroke simply a little bit quicker and always alternating between the two mallets. If we use that pure rotation, we're going to get a motion that looks like this. As opposed to the natural extension motion, which will create more of a bouncing effect, which will look like this. Once again, here's the rotation. 
versus the bouncing motion. Now at the beginning of this piece, it starts off with eighth note single alternating strokes in both hands. And in both hands, this, you can either move towards each other or away from each other. Now this can be a little bit tricky at first, so let's practice it by taking out the single alternating strokes all together. And what we're going to do is we're going to simply practice them with double vertical strokes together in the way of block chords. Now the beginning of this piece, the first two bars, will sound something like this. Now what this is going to allow you to do, it will allow you to learn the notes and the shifts that go along with it without having to worry about the single alternating strokes right then if you're still just a little bit uncomfortable with them. As you get more comfortable with the notes and where to go, all you have to do is simply replace the double vertical strokes with single alternating strokes. Except for that one wrong note. The same as can be said with the next section where he, instead of playing eighth notes together in both hands, we're going to offset them by one sixteenth note. What you want to make sure that you avoid doing is when it changes to those offset 16th notes, you don't want to change the motion in any way. It will be the exact same motion from when you're playing them together as, was, as when you're playing them offset by a 16th note. And we can take that block chord method to that next part too. Instead of playing the hands together, we can simply play double vertical strokes. Instead of together, we're going to offset them by 1 8th notes. All we have to do once you get comfortable with that is simply change the motion from double vertical strokes to single alternating strokes and offset them by a 16th note and you'll have the second half of this introduction. Now, in the very beginning of the piece, Ivan introduces a very simple melody. It's very simple and you'll hear it repeated and used in variations throughout the piece. Now, starting in measure 30, things start getting a little bit more complicated. We start having themes go along with that melody in both hands. So a good way to practice this is by completely separating the hands and practicing each hand individually. So you want to practice that part, followed by practicing this part. Now, Practicing those separately will help develop some muscle memory in each hand. And all you have to do once those get a little bit more comfortable is simply put them together. Now this will not guarantee that it will go together seamlessly or flawlessly, but it at least it will give you some sort of muscle memory, memory to draw on when you're trying to get the coordination down. Now, a usual feature in a lot of Ivan's music is his lack of the use of dynamics. This doesn't mean that you're not supposed to do any dynamics and not and keep everything similar, but it just means that it's going to allow you to be more creative. So take that as an opportunity to inflect your own style onto the piece rather than looking at it as I don't need to do any dynamics and I'm going to keep everything the same throughout the piece. Use it as an opportunity to be creative and to have some fun with it. Now at the end, things start getting a little bit tense a little bit groovy. So you want to make sure that we have a nice sense of groove towards the end. And he's going to introduce a lot of octaves in the right hand. We want to make sure that you're doing, as we've practiced in previous pieces and with previous sections in the book, is that we use those octaves nice and relaxed. We don't want to tense up. We don't want to block our wrist. We want to use a nice fluid stroke in order to get those octaves. that you hit the right notes such as that but it will have a nice full sound and you won't have to worry about fatigue quite as much so avoid locking up the wrist such as this a nice fluid stroke will help you get through that section now as the titles alludes this piece was dedicated to the memory of Muhammad Ali who just passed away 
And Ivan, with myself, along with another composer featured in this book named Aaron Stabell, are all fairly massive boxing fans. When we all lived in Rochester together, usually once or twice a month we would find all three of us at one of our houses watching whatever big fight is going on at the time. Now, when somebody prominent in the boxing world, whether it's a fighter or a reporter or somebody who's very highly affiliated with the, with the sport passes away, there is a way that it's paid tribute to them. And at the following big fight after that person's death, they'll usually have some sort of moment of silence for that person. And during that moment of silence, they will ring a 10 count on the bell. And at the end of this piece, when you find yourself playing 10 octave E's and wondering why there are 10 random octave E's placed right here, that's what that is. That is the tribute to a, the passing of Muhammad Ali and to passing of anybody in the prominent sport of boxing. So that's why the piece has 10 octave E's at the end, and, that's why, and that is just another way to pay tribute to him and also to work in our love of boxing into this piece. I want to say a big thank you to Ivan um, for writing this piece for me. I'm very happy to have it included in this book and along with this project. And it's always great to not only have a great composer writing for this, but also have it be one of your best friends is even more special. So thank you very much, Ivan. And I hope that these tips will help you get through Ivan's Trevino's Float Like a Butterfly.